Today we will discuss about how to measure visual acuity. Now let's see what are the prerequisites of visual acuity measurement. Room distance. The room distance should be 6 meters. But in clinical practice to get a 6 meter room is very difficult. Mostly we have 3 meters room. So in that case we can use 3 meters room with mirror. Illumination. Illumination should be daylight condition, not less than 20 feet candles or 200 lux. Accommodation, no or minimal stimulation. Accommodation can be stimulated if the room length is less than 6 meters or the room light condition is dim light condition. When accommodation will get stimulated, then it will increase the converging power of our eyes and it may increase the visual acuity in hyperopic patient. Visual acuity measurement in such patient won't be accurate. Patient preparation. Describe the procedure to the patient. Request not to squeeze the eye. If the patient squeeze their eyes during visual equity measurement, their vision will improve because they are blocking the peripheral rays that will improve the vision in spherical refractive error like myopia or hyperometropia. And due to the anatomical structures of our eyelid, it will give stenopic slit effect, which will improve the vision in astigmatism. In such patient, visual equity measurement won't be accurate. Request the patient not to press the eye harder. If they press hard to their eye, it will alter the shape of the eyeball. It will alter the curvature of cornea or even axial length, due to which the visual equity will be less as compared to normal. Now, procedure of measuring visual equity. Ask to occlude left eye with palm of the left hand or trial frame with occluder. Then ask to read from top of the chart with right eye. If patient able to read all the line and letters, visual acuity is recorded as 6 by 6 unaided. Now you might be thinking, what if patient is not able to read all the line? In the visual acuity chart, we have a specific score for each line. Like if the patient is able to read up to 4th line, visual acuity will be 612, if 5th line 69 and so forth. Again a question comes, what if patient is not able to read a complete line? Suppose if a patient has read 612 line completely and also 3 more letters from 69 line. Visual equity score for this patient can be written in 3 ways. 6 by 9 partial because in the 6 by 9 line 5 letters are there, patient have read 3 letters so we can say 6 9 partial or 6 by 12 plus 3 because patient had completed 612 line and 3 more letters from 69 line or 69 minus 2 because in the 69 line 5 letters are there and patient missed 2 letters so we can write 6 by 9 minus 2 but the question is which one is a more accurate visual equity score 6 by 9 minus 2 is more accurate visual equity score because in 6 by 9 line 5 letters are there and patient has read 3 letters which is more than 50%. So we will shift to 6-9 line instead of staying in 6-12 line. What if patient is not able to read any line any letters? Then our next step will be reducing distance. Ideally chart needs to take closer to the patient in 1 meter steps. In clinical setup it's not possible to take the chart closer to the patient because the chart are attached with the wall. In this case, we can show our fingers because the width of our finger almost same width of 660 line. First at 5 meters, then 4 meters, 3 meters, 2 meters, 1 meters and at last counting finger close to face. And visual equity will be recorded as if the patient is able to count the finger at 5 meters, then 560, if able to count at 4 meter, 460 and so forth. Now again you might be thinking, what if patient is not able to recognize counting finger close to face? Then our next step will be moving hand. If the patient is not able to count finger at close to face, then we will move our hand. If they are able to recognize hand movement, the visual equity will be recorded as hand movement positive. If they are not able to recognize hand movement, the visual equity will be recorded as hand movement negative. Again, one more question comes, what if patient is not able to recognize hand movements also? Then our next step will be to check perception of light. 
If patient is not able to recognize hand movements, then we will shine a torchlight. But in that case, room illumination should be dim. Initially, in the prerequisites, we have mentioned that illumination should be daylight condition. But here, the patient visual equity is so less, we need to identify whether the perception of light is there or not. To check perception of light, the room should be dim light condition. Now, ask the patient whether he or she is able to see the light. If able to recognize the light, then visual equity will be recorded as PL positive and also need to shine light from up, down, right and left to identify the projection areas in which areas patient is able to appreciate the light. And the visual equity will be recorded as PL positive with PR which is projection region. Suppose if the patient is appreciate light in up gauge position, then here it will be positive. And if the patient is able to appreciate the nasal side, here it will be positive. And if the other two sides patient is not able to appreciate, there will be negative. If patient is not able to recognize the light, then visual equity will be recorded as no perception of light or NPL or PL negative. Question for you. If a patient has read 612 line completely and also two more letters from 69 line, then what will be the visual equity score? Stay with smart optometry and study optometry smartly.